YouTube team keep it clean the same graven here with another episode of NFL questions from subs and that's a series where you can ask me a question and we answer it in a video like this you want to take part in it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can just send it directly on patreon appreciate that all the team keep it clean patrons thank you for showing extra support to the channel uh, team keep it clean we got a lot of great questions like we always do let's jump into it First question came from my boy Marco, and I appreciate you being a patron, my guy. He said, Engraving, what's up, my brother? Hope you are doing well. So I was tossing and turning at 2.30 in the morning, and suddenly I thought to myself, what if Ravens re-sign Westry and move him to free safety to back up Stevens or start at free safety? That way we could possibly sign a corner via free agency instead of signing the safety. What are your thoughts? Oh, um, wow. Oh, that would be something. Um... Oh, I uh, I don't think they would do that yet. And you know what? Thank you for reminding me about him, actually, because whenever we talk about the Ravens secondary, I automatically think Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Tavon Young, and I automatically also think that Anthony Avid, he's about to be gone. Tavon Young could actually possibly be gone, too. Deshaun Elliott, I think he'll be gone. They still got Chuck Clark, Brandon Stevens, Geno Stone. We'll see what happens with him. But my point is when saying that, I, I always forget about Chris Westry. I always forget about him. I don't believe he's an unrestricted free agent, but I got to double check on that. But as far as moving him to free safety, I, I don't see them doing that. Um, Ray, like he... I feel like he hasn't even blossomed to his fullest possibility as a corner yet. So for them to switch him to free safety, they, they already got a project at free safety right now with Brandon Stevens. And, and he certainly came along. He got better and better as the season progressed. But I don't see them having Brandon Stevens, who is still in, in an early stages of being a project at free safety, and them adding another project at free safety on top of that behind him and Chris Westry. Next question came from my guy Cronall. He said, I've been watching Prochet since he was at SMU and always wanted to have him picked up by the Ravens, which he did, and I was excited. Cooper Cup came from EMU and or EWU and was not in a highly competitive conference, but I also admired his skill set. Do you think we have a hidden Cooper Cup in James Prochet, even if he is 75% of what C Cup is? I don't think so. Um, nothing about, besides him having really good hands, but nothing about his game reminds me of Cooper Cup's game at all. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but they just, they have different play styles. James Prochet, he is, he's not quick. Cooper Cup is quick. Cooper Cup's not fast. They both not fast, but Cooper Cup is more quick than James Prochet, in my opinion. Uh, but again, the hands are there. Uh, there is definitely a height difference, a size difference. Um, and yeah, Cooper Cup, he is going to route himself open. He's going he go, he to run a route that's going to make him get open. James Prochet, separation not really his best attribute, but he can do the jump balls. That, that is his thing. He will go up and get it. He will try to outmuscle you for the ball. So I don't think we have a Cooper Cup. I think James Prochet, his game is more like a, uh, probably like a, a shorter Anquan Bolden. That's who I will compare his game to, in my opinion. Next question came from my guy, Trey Five. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam and team keep it clean. My question may be a bit premature as it relates more so to the draft, but it is about constructing a roster. Teams like the Seahawks, unsuccessfully, and the Rams, successfully, have traded away early draft picks in exchange for experienced veterans. Ooh, I think I know where this is going. Uh, the Seahawks tried with Jamal Adams, but they still do not seem close to winning a Super Bowl. Which brings me to the Rams, who have pretty much <laughs> been foregoing early round picks and first rounders, specifically since 2016, uh, with Jared Goff ahead of that draft. Uh, they have also done so with Jalen Ramsey, Matt Stafford, Von Miller, Sonny Michelle, etc. It's paid off with two Super Bowl appearances and one Super Bowl win in six years. That's pretty good. I know... Uh, it's not Patriots good, but Patriots were, they were their own story. But for us regular NFL fans of these regular teams, that's pretty good. Anyway, I know for sure that Eric DaCosta would never do this because he loves his precious draft picks. But personally, I am quite intrigued by this idea and would not be opposed to it. If anything, I would see DaCosta on the receiving end of the draft picks instead of the players. <laughs> sure. You know he would be all over that, man. Somebody offered... Of course, a first round pick, but a second round pick, third round pick, a couple of picks. Oh, you know, he's going to be listening. He will be listening. He'll, he'll probably call them before they call him. But anyway, 
Uh, he said, I know this is a long email, but what are your thoughts on this idea? Yeah, I, I agree with you that Eric DeCosta would, would certainly find himself on the flip side. Not giving up the picks, but uh, bringing in the picks. Um, I, I wouldn't mind if Ravens, they, they adopted a similar style. Maybe not all the way like the Rams did, but hey, if because I just they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna do that. They're not gonna go like all in like that and really say forget them draft picks. Nah, they they ain't gonna do that. Um, that would be something though. Like, and what me personally, I want these Ravens to do is to to really go get those guys, like that guy at this position, that guy. And I know you can't do that for every single position, but. Sometimes you got to go out of your comfort zone if you really want to reach a whole nother level uh, in whatever it is that you do. Ravens right now, they're in a comfort zone. They're in a little, nice little sweet spot to where they're not a bad team at all. They're not a bad team. They haven't been a bad team in a while. They haven't been just this terrible team in a long time. But they also haven't been great. Well, they were great in the regular season in 2019. But besides that, they haven't been this great team. They've been good, but they haven't been great. If you want to be great, you got to change some stuff up and be willing to, to do something uh, just a bit different. But as far as going to Rams approach, I don't see them doing that because they love those draft picks. They love keeping those draft pick picks so tight. But they could be a little more aggressive and, and just the, the, the quality of the aggression could go up a bit. Because we've seen, like, who have they gotten? They got Yannick Ngakwe. What they get him for? I think it was, what, a third and a fifth round or something like that? And they're like, okay, that's cool. It didn't work out, obviously. We're like, oh, okay, that's cool. We ain't give up that much anyway. Oh, okay, cool. Um, they got Marcus Peters. Now, that, that one was crazy how that one worked out, and it's been great. Uh, they traded Kenny Young in the fifth round pick for Marcus Peters. Oh, that was amazing, amazing. Um, but then with Calais Campbell. They gave up a fifth round for him. It's like, oh, low, very low risk. Good player, but he's on the back end of his career, of course. But when are we going to make that? Like, they, they could have gotten Xavier Howard. But, hey, that ain't happened. The, Jamal Adams was another one who they, they were in talks with a couple years ago when he was still with the Jets. That didn't happen. DeAndre Hopkins, the worst, the most painful one, that didn't happen for whatever reason. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, they, they – uh, the, the, the Texans, they wouldn't want to trade him in the AFC. You give up the right price, and I'm sure you could start a conversation. You could definitely start a conversation. Because it's not like, oh, just because he's in the AFC, the Texans are going to be playing against him every year or every season. No. You're going to play him at least once every four years, and it's a possibility if both the Ravens and the Texans finish either in first place or second place or third place or fourth place in their division, then they'll play again. But yeah, anyway, um, we just, well, I can't say we. I, I just hope Ravens, like, really show this year that they really trying to make this thing happen, like, now. They trying to not only be a good team, but be a Super Bowl winning team right here, right now. And that last question leads us to this. How big will the 2022 Ravens offseason be? This next question came from my guy Landon. He said, what's up, Engraven and all the team? Keep it clean. This is my first time participating in a question from subs, so let's jump Right into it. Okay, he ain't beating around the bush at all. He said, I'm going straight into it. Anyway, as I watched the playoffs in the Super Bowl, I thought about what the Ravens have compared to the elite NFL teams like the Chiefs, the Bills, the Rams, etc. I truly think, see, he left the Bengals off of there. That was a little Ravens petty in there. But anyway, he said, I truly think that the Ravens offense has everything it needs except for maybe one or two offensive linemen who can protect Lamar and give him time in the pocket, even though he'll probably still run for 25 yards and juke out half of the defense in the process. I'm confident in Hollywood, Bateman, DuVernay, Prochet, even though I don't think he gets the ball enough. Now, I believe we could have one of, if not the best running back uh, tandem in football in J.K. and Gus the Bus. Uh, we also have an elite tight end in Mandrews who I think will have an even better 2020 two season oh okay the one place on this whole team i doubt though is the defense uh, this side of the ball has some weapons and hidden gems but there are also some major holes that need to be fixed and improved uh, i think our most two promising weapons on this side of the ball are marlon humphrey and patrick queen uh, I also think that Oway and Bowser will continue to benefit uh, our defense over the next couple of years. What I doubt most is our interior pass rush and really uh, pass rush in general, along with our personnel at the safety position. Stopping the run can only get you so far in the NFL, especially in the NFC. 
I mean in the AFC, excuse me. Uh, a conference where you face quarterbacks like Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Burrow week in and week out. QBs who, if you give them enough time, will pick the defense apart with weapons like Kelsey, Diggs, Hill, Chase, etc. I like Deshaun Elliott and the intensity he plays with, but our secondary had one of the lowest turnover rates in the league. All in all, I feel that the only way the Ravens can go far in the next couple of years is to build a defense strong enough to fight off the elite offensive attacks in the AFC's best teams. Uh, I think we can get there by going defense heavy in this year's draft and making one or two splash defensive free agency signings. What do you think the Ravens should do to keep up with the best AFC teams in the 2022 offseason? And do you think the Ravens can keep up with the elite AFC teams this offseason? Keep up with the great content. Thank you for all that you do to bring people together on this platform. And thanks for reading my question. Shout out to you, Landon. This was really, really good and well put together, man. Um, first thing, my priority uh, for the Ravens will be that they need to be able to score more points. They have to be able to put up at least like 30, 35 a game. That, that will be my, my biggest mission this offseason. Create an offense. to and, and again, a lot has to do with health. That, that's that got to be something, but a lot has to do with the plays, the play calling, the play execution, it, it's so much. But um, being healthy, that's first and foremost, but you have to have an offense that can put up a lot of points. You have to. That's this NFL's, uh, that's the NFL these days. And you have to take advantage of what the NFL is giving you. The NFL favors offense heavy, and it's not even close. Defenses, they, they don't stand a chance in today's NFL. Man, they, they got to do everything right. And even on top of that, when they do do everything right, NFL will still penalize them for something. So it is so hard to play defense. So what you need to do is realize that and take advantage of that. Create an offense that can score a lot of points. Because you need, to, I mean, that's the name of the game, right? Score more points than the other team so you can win. So that's first and foremost. And, yeah, that is done by having an offensive line. And, again, I said this before. I won't be surprised if Ravens, they take a receiver early in the draft. The first three rounds will not be surprised. If they take a big body, go get it type of receiver in the first three rounds of the draft, maybe one, even one or two, first or second round, would not be a shocker to me at all. Um, but, anyway, um, but just to, to really build, 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 build that strong offense. Now, as far as defense, you mentioned interior pass rush. I agree with you a thousand percent, thousand percent. And I think with Wink, that would have helped him be a lot more successful over the years if he would have had a really good interior pass rusher. He didn't have that. He didn't have that. Did not have that. Um, so with Wink, uh, I mean, not with Wink, but with uh, McDonald now, Um Hopefully the Ravens can go get him a really good interior pass rusher. And hopefully Matabike, he keeps taking steps forward in his game. Um, we'll see if they bring Calais Campbell back. They probably will. Uh, but it's important that they do get an interior pass rusher because that pressure up the middle is unlike anything, any type of pressure. Because uh, you bring pressure from the outside, quarterback could just step up. But you bring pressure up the middle, ooh, quarterback get flustered they get shook shooketh but um and then uh your, your secondary got to be right secondary got because teams are loaded with wide receivers you look at the the look at the chiefs i was about to say the Bengals, but start with the chiefs chiefs got tyreek hill they got travis kelsey they got they got pringle they got demarcus robinson they had josh gordon too but it ain't really work out with him and them this uh past season but so they, they got quite a few guys. The Bengals, they got Jamar Chase, they got T. Higgins, they got Tyler Boyd, they got CJ Uzama. The Bills, they got Dawson Knox, Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis, um uh, the guy. Oh, not Cooper Cup. Cole Beasley, there we go. I could not remember his name. So you you, you got to go up against some nice receivers, so you need to have a stacked secondary. You need to have a stacked secondary. You need to have a really good safety play, too, because they're going to try you deep. All of those teams, they're going to try you deep. So this is why we really need a free safety, like a, a safety that, that, can, that got that range, that can notice, oh, that ball's in the air. Okay, let me go get it, or let me go stop them from getting it. So I, I agree with you. It starts up front, obviously, on both ends, of, well, on both offense and defense. Um, but, yeah, then you just really got to build a strong roster that, again, can put up a lot of points 
And you got to have some really good corners that can stop that pace. A, B, C, Y, O, B, J. Next question came from my boy Rodell. He said, good morning, my guy. Glad to see you doing well and delivering quality content 365, 24-7. You're truly a Ravens legend and dedicated hard worker. Appreciate you. No, I appreciate you. Legend, though, nah, not at all. Not even close. Uh, he said, now let's play a game. Wide receiver won. In 16 games, this wide receiver had 58 receptions for 769 yards and eight touchdowns. Wide receiver two. In eight games, this wide receiver had 45 receptions for 483 yards and four touchdowns. Wide receiver three. In eight games, this wide receiver had 27 receptions for 305 yards and five touchdowns. What do two of these wide receivers have in common? Come on, guess. Okay. Um, well, I see wide receiver two and three. They both played in eight games. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, I mean, wide receiver two and three, they both were under wide receiver one uh, as far as yards. Uh, but they put up a good amount of touchdowns, though. Um, but yeah, let me, let me stop guessing because if I keep guessing, we'll be here forever. Uh, he said, "Well, two of them were oh, two of them were available for the Ravens to sign for very, very cheap. Oh, and one of them won a Super Bowl, and the other one is playing in this year's Super Bowl. The uh, way I'm getting at is I'm not content with our wide receiver court, and I've been sending you this same email for four years now. Hollywood Brown is not, I repeat, is not a wide receiver one." He is way too small for wide receiver one and lacks a ton of aggressiveness. Wide receiver one should be able to run any route and have a catch radius that only the elite have. Hollywood does not jump for contested balls. Hollywood slides down to prevent contact. This is not Hollywood slander. Trust me, I like him. However, I feel like he will flourish as a slot wide receiver. Bateman, it's way too early to tell what he is. What we do know is that he hasn't came in and did what Jefferson, Chase, cd lamb did in their rookie season yes i know he was hurt in the qb situation blah 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 our tight end should not be our leading receiver <laughs> lol if he is fine but our next leading wide receiver shouldn't be 300 yards behind him uh, these guys are young and could use a veteran presence sammy was not the answer at all see i, I don't know if y'all remember i remember when we uh signed sammy watkins i said all right cool but that can't be it they they could not put all their eggs into the Sammy Watkins basket. They couldn't, and they did because they 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 didn't because they drafted Rashad Bateman. But anyway, I ain't even gonna get into that. He said we need a wide receiver who can make contested catches, separate from any corner, and turn a ten yard slant into a home run, aka touchdown. I know you're thinking we have that right. Well, while we do, we don't. Hollywood doesn't consistently beat single coverage to me, and still hasn't had a game like his first NFL game in the NFL. Uh, if that Hollywood showed up every game, I wouldn't be sending this email. We also need a wide receiver to catch all the drops that come from Hollywood and Mark Andrews. Someone who will make those plays in the playoffs. All, well, you know Hollywood, he make the plays in the playoffs. All the, 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 the drops that Hollywood be having in the playoffs, all that, it goes away. Uh, but anyway, someone who will make those plays in the playoffs. All in all, we could have went and got Antonio Brown or Odell Beckham Jr., and who knows what would have happened. Uh, both of those guys were free agents and are now champions. Please go get me Michael Thomas, Odell Beckham Jr., Antonio Brown, Mike Williams, or Allen Robinson. We need help. Now, um, this was sent on uh, February 11th, so it was before the Super Bowl. And before uh, something came out that said the Saints are not going to trade Michael Thomas. But, hey, we've seen it be said before where teams say, oh, we're not going to trade this team. and I mean, we're not going to trade this player, and then they end up doing it anyway. Um, Odell Beckham Jr., this email was before he tore his ACL, which that sucks for him, uh, but he'll still get picked up by somebody. Hopefully, he, he need to go to the same doctor that Cam Akers went to uh, and see if they, they can get that worked out. Or was Cam Akers Achilles? I always get Achilles and ACL mixed up. Um, Antonio Brown. Oh, man, you know the Ravens. They're they not doing that. I wouldn't mind if they did, but you, you know they ain't going to. Uh, and Mike Williams. Uh, Mike Williams, he gonna make a good amount of money. He gonna make a ni nice, nice chunk of change. So that means the Ravens ain't they not paying that chunk of change to no Mike Williams. Uh, Allen Robinson, same thing. He he gonna make a lot of money on the open market, and Ravens are not gonna pay for no Allen Robinson on the open market. Uh, DJ Shark, you think about him. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with him. Um, but I just, uh, any, anybody who's going to command a, a decent amount of money, I, I don't, as a right wide receiver, Ravens are not going to sign them. Like I already have that engraved in my mind that it, they just not going to, because that's not what they do. They, they don't do that type of stuff. 
And it was one time when you thought they were going to do it, even though it was to the wrong person, when they were going to pay, pay Ryan Grant that, 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 what was it, 29 mil, something like that. They said, oh, no, wait a minute. He failed the physical. He got a foot injury. Wink, wink. They, 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 they regretted it. But um, they, so at, at wide receiver, they're not going to make no crazy move like that. Uh, and, of course, there's Devontae Adams. I didn't even think about him. He's, yeah, okay. So once the Broncos get Aaron Rodgers and they're going to go ahead and bring over Devontae. And think about that. Oh, man. Because they, they, Broncos are, like, right there. Think of Aaron Rodgers went there. If they got Aaron Rodgers and they got Devontae Adams and they got Jerry Judy and they got Sutton and they got, um, what's the other one? Tim Patrick, too. It's like, oh, are y'all going to keep all of them? You got you got to think that they're going to get rid of at least, like, well, just one of them. But if I was a Bronco, I would try to keep all of them. But, you know, it's going to be one that's not getting the targets like that, and he ain't going to be happy. So they're going to be like, all right, we'll, we'll ship you out. So you, you got to think. If they get Aaron Rodgers and they got Devontae Adams, then they're going to get rid of one of that guys. But we'll see what happens. Um, but this, this is why I, I, I do think Ravens will draft a receiver early. I really do. I really do. Um, but, yeah, I agree that they – I feel like they shouldn't be done at wide receiver. I think they, they need, like, a, a big body guy, aggressive guy. Um, and I know Miles Boykin is there, but I think they're going to unfortunately get rid of Miles Boykin. Um, but it's like even though I think they're going to get rid of Miles Boykin, like somebody with that, that frame, a big frame, big, big catch radius, somebody, somebody that's going to go and get it. Somebody that's going to be very aggressive. All the stuff that you mentioned. Somebody that'll get open like, and just really be that guy. They'll have it mentally and physically, too. Um, so, yeah, and with Rashad Bateman, the jury's still out on him. We'll see. Uh, with Hollywood, we know what he can do. There's some stuff that he can't do, but we know what he can do. Um, so, you know, you, you, I feel like we haven't gotten everything out of Hollywood Brown, but you've gotten a lot out of him, and, and you... I feel like you 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 know what to expect from him because you had him for a couple years and whatnot, um, but yeah, in, in another offense, I already know he he would eat, man. He would feast because he's in a run first offense now, and for it being a run first offense, he's doing pretty well. He could have done a lot better too had not had he not dropped some stuff and had there not been some over and under throws at different points from different quarterbacks too. But in a, doing pretty good for himself in a run first offense, especially this run first offense, especially with you know, anyway. Um, but if Ravens, they got another receiver who, who was like, like that, who was like that. That's why I think they go to the draft for it. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But as far as all the guys that you named, yeah, yeah, I don't see that happening for any of them. Last question on this episode came from my guy Howard. He said, what's good, bro? How you feeling that the season is over? Is your heart still there or did it explode like everybody else's? Uh, hope all is well with you and yours. It's your boy Flirt Nowinski. Per usual, sit back and relax, y'all. Psych! Making history today with a short email. So my question for today is, I'm scrolling through this email. It is not short. It's shorter than your emails usually be, but it's still not short. But anyway, he said, um, do you think the bench and practice team is the key to filling out our defense and just worry about the offense that I will not rant about in this email? Hear me out. I know this might sound pretty crazy, but you know my crazy takes have panned out so far, whether it was about Gus or Stanley, LOL. So, could the unsung heroes of last season save us money, picks, and time? If we keep Anthony Averett and Chris Westry, our defense is a lock. They both prove my theory of the more you play, uh, the better you will be and get. And, and I mean, that, yeah, that's true. You get more burn. You get more, play, you get more playing time. Then, it, yeah, you, you got no choice but to get better. <laughs> like you, 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 it usually don't work out the other way. Sometimes it can, but it usually works a lot better. Um... He said, sign Anthony Averitt. He's a good corner. You got Humphrey on the other side, and I know what y'all are thinking. What about Juice Man? Well, we know he's not afraid to hit anybody, which is kind of funny because that was everybody's complaint of him before coming to be more, is the fact that he literally wouldn't tackle. But once I seen him put King Henry on his back pockets, I knew we unlocked something in him. But he is also a ball hawking corner. We, we move him uh, back to free safety where he can do his ball hawking thing and make, short, make the short tackle if needed. But he won't need to, and I'll get back to that at the end. Okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this thing. I'm going to let it play out first before I say anything. Uh, then keep Chuck at strong safety. We know he can hit and has displayed his ball skills a lot this year and lack thereof some plays, but it was more highlights than lowlights. LOL. You sure? For Chuck Clark? 
don't know about that one. He said, so boom, whether Williams or Campbell stays or leave, we got uh, Justin Matabike, another person that proves he belongs in a starting role. Hayes is another young talent with upside. Oh, my goodness. I forget about Dalen Hayes. Uh, so boom, we keep Bynes and Fort for moral support. No, but for real, though, they have the knowledge and can still play and where we need them. But look, uh, the route, right outside linebacker is Chris Board. Middle linebacker is Queen and Harrison. Left outside linebacker is Bowser and Away. And I put them both because they can each flip flop on the line. Uh, and this is where I say Peters will make the short tackle if need be, but he won't be he won't need to. Bows in the way and boy, they wrap up. Now, Queen, that's a different story, but three to one is good. <laughs> well, how you feel about that? No. Marcus Peters to safety, no. He's not a short tackler. He did make that tackle on, on Derrick Henry. And ooh, boy, that had us all like shocked and like, whoa, that's crazy. But he tackling is not his strong suit. It's not. He can make tackles. Sometimes he'll take some tackles off, but ball hawking is his thing. Him as a, that that's his thing. Um, and that's why his game is just so respected around the league, around the NFL, because he's a ball hawk. Now, we don't need to put him to free safety. It's way too early for that because he's still a really good corner. If he was getting slow at corner, if he was falling off at corner, okay, mate, but he's not. So to the free safety thing, no. And he said, oh, yeah, Westry, my guy, he's 6'4 and fast as Hollywood. Um, and he is our joker because, look, in sub packages, he can cover big tight ends. He's literally 6'4 and fast as Hollywood. We don't have to worry about getting beat by a drag post or slant by a tight end. And you know we have Tay-Tay too. So when we have to play packages with four corners, they will be in the slot with Owe and Bowser rushing. So how you feel about that? Now that part, I don't mind that part. That, that, that's cool. Um, he Again, he got to, to play more to get a little better. But I, I don't see them re-signing Anthony Averitt. That part, I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, but you still got the draft. You still got... Our Darius Washington, um, you still got, uh, like you mentioned just now, Chris Westry. Um, I feel like I'm missing people too. But you'll still have free agency in the draft and stuff to get more corners. They did re-sign. Uh, I always forget his name. Uh, I, I can't think. K Kevon Seymour. There we go. They re-signed him too. Um, so they got a couple of corners that they're going to be bringing back. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. This is an interesting thing right here. But as far as uh, a lot of these guys, Board, uh, Queen, Harrison, Bowser, away, they'll all be back. Um, and they could they could move them around a little bit. But I would expect, you said right outside linebacker, Board, and middle linebacker, Queen, and Harrison. I actually expect uh, Harrison to, um, to go to outside linebacker. It seems like they're going to be shifting him there. Um, but then I think they could also uh, draft a linebacker or sign a linebacker in free agency, either way. But you did also mention about Josh Bynes and um, LJ Fort being there as well, so that's um, that would do. The, but but at the same time, those got both of them are older too, so you still got to prepare for the future. So I still think they will draft or sign a, a linebacker, um, either draft somebody uh, who come in and be ready, or or sign somebody who could come in and be ready. Um, I just think that they are going to be very cautious cautiously optimistic but still cautious uh with patrick queen i don't think that they're gonna put all their chips in the patrick queen um but i think they're gonna start thinking about some backup plans because this will be his third year uh so this is a huge year for him because after this year after this season then they would have to decide if they're gonna pick up his fifth year option since he was a first round pick um and not to say that, oh, even if they decline it, then it will be over. No, they could decline it and they could sign him to an extension. But this year is everything for Patrick Queen. It is so big. And it's so big for a lot of other guys, too. But speaking of Patrick Queen specifically, this year is huge for him. Uh, so we'll see exactly how the Ravens delegate, delegate any responsibilities to him, uh, what they give to him, what they take away from him, what they put on his plate, what they take off his plate. Uh, but that, that'll be very important to, to see and to watch for, especially in this offseason, man.